All right, gang, how's everybody doing? Welcome to our sales call. I have my buddies, uh, James and Pam, on the call. And uh, I know y'all that went to a uh, family reunion had a chance, uh, some of you had a chance to sit at the table when they, um, uh, we invite them to be kind of our, our guest, uh, guests at our table. And, you know, I'd heard nothing but great comments on that meeting. Um, and uh, so that's pretty cool. So uh, I had someone uh, ask me about phone scripts and booking appointments and, and so on. And I thought, you know, what a gr great idea to be able to have uh, James and Pam on. And then I had someone else ask me, hey, I need, I wanted to get Pam's telephone script because I think Juan Bryant had sat at the table with them when they spoke at our table at Pam Reunion. So I thought, well, what the heck, let's see if uh, Pam Pam's available to talk about booking appointments. And uh, so I'm very fired up and I, I sent out the phone script. So she uses her own and then she also included Paul Epstein's phone scripts as well. And uh, there's, there's a way to do this. You know, there, it's not just following a script, it's how you do the script that counts. And I think Pam, Pam has, uh, really figured some things out. So anyway, so we got people coming on. So I am going to turn it over to James and Pam. All right, gang. Well, James, hey, Alex. thanks so much for being on our call. Well, thanks for asking us. We're really fired up. We, we love you guys. It's an honor to be here. Uh, yeah, I can't say enough how I am like usually I'm sitting where everyone else is sitting listening to people and taking notes and learning and so to be on this side of the of the camera I guess is is pretty exciting for me so thank you for putting your faith in me uh, I yep. hope I hope I do justice in fact actually it was it was um, kind of fortuitous because I had uh, I I took a screenshot of your um, of the Facebook your last Facebook post on your activity and I screenshot it and send it out to the group on Slack. And um, and so it was just kind of like, wow, this this was a really good timing. This is where you did uh, 429 dials, 28 connects, 15 appointments, nine apps for 10,167 AP. And, and we track all the issue paid month to date numbers for my entire hierarchy. And you guys are consistently in the top 10. And I keep telling everybody, you know, the formula is simple. Get a bunch of leads, make a bunch of dials, book 40 appointments, and you're probably going to write 10,000 a week. And uh, and I, I think that's probably what your strength is, is that you guys are very consistent. And, you know, you have uh, good weeks, bad weeks, medium weeks, but at the end of the day, you're, you're making a lot of money. So anyway, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'll shut up and uh, let it rip, Pam. Well... Uh, James and I work together. I think we, we work as a good team. I'm really blessed to have him as a partner uh, in this job and also in life. So it starts there. So I know you probably hear, I'm just going to do some real basic stuff. I know you all know, have all your leads ready the night before, be prepared in the morning. Your, your dial time is your dial time. And like, unless the house is on fire, you don't leave it. Um, so I try to get whatever I need to get done before my dial time. I get all my papers and everything ready the night before. So I sit down and I'm ready to go. So that's the first thing is be prepared. No. Uh, where you're dialing. We run a couple of counties, so I have everything separated by county. Some of our counties are really big, so then I'll subdivide them into quarters so that, you know, I try not to put appointments that are two and a half hours apart, you know, uh, drive time right next to each other. So there's a little bit of planning uh, that I do ahead of time to make sure that my dial day is smooth. And then, of course, you know, you just dial, you don't know who's going to answer and when they're going to be available. So then it all goes to heck. But so, um, so to clarify a little bit further, um, it sounds to me like you physically print out your leads. I do. Okay. 
And then um, I think talk. it's really important to have it in your yes. hand to show your clients as well. In fact, I, I, I'm sure James does this, but I, um, as a, as a, really as a matter of habit, I always take notes on the back of the lead. So whenever I have to reference that client in the future, yes, it could be like when they died or when something controversial comes up, I always have my notes on the back of the lead. I mean, it's very, I keep it simple and I just jot down all kinds of stuff on there. What I showed them. I mean, I'm pretty anal about note-taking, which is why I print out, printed out every lead, but, um, and so what, so getting to that whole idea of, um, you know, you got a couple counties. So this is, I've, I haven't taught this enough, but let's, you know, you, you're in Maricopa, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Maricopa is kind of like this huge county. And then are you in Pima? We run Pima as well. Okay. So I think, okay, I'm just Pima sort we, of. We do not. We run Pinal. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, we run Pinal. Pima, oh. Pima, Tucson. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. So right. So now, like it's this. on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Gee, Alex, how do you know that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what, what they're saying is they're kind of like chopping it up. Like, like I, I'm just, you know, just making an example to say this A, B, C, and D. And so she's not going to book him here. And then the next appointment's here. Right. Because this is like, this probably could be three hours, right? Like this. Yeah. But what they're talking about is when she has an appointment here, she's going to try to, you know, like maybe the, in the morning, right? And then, and then you find one here in the afternoon. And then, you know, so she tries to group them kind of like in firing a, firing a pistol. You're trying to keep your target kind of within an area. And here's one thing that I love about what you guys do is you have so many leads that you order every week that you can do this. Cause I have agents go, well, I only got 10 leads. It's like, dude, 10 leads is going to force you running from here to here instead of having a, a lot of leads from this week, last week, week before, month before, two months before, where then you can start targeting your area. So you can be super efficient. So like in the morning, James could be here. Then he just goes to there, 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 and there in the afternoon he makes the track and then afternoon or, he, you know, kind of does this. So is this kind of your, your, how you do it? Yes, that is the best laid plan. So we kind of decide, well, I decide uh, if we're going to start close to us and work out or go all the way out first and then have him snake back home. Oh, see now look, okay. Now you, now you're talking super efficiency. So here's, well, that's the thing you need. You only have so many hours in a day and you need to make the most of it. And then I love having my husband home as much as possible. So I like to have his, I try to have his last appointments close to the house so that he's done, you know, it might be 10 o'clock that last appointment. And then he only has, you know, a 10, 15 minute drive home. As yeah. opposed to being, an That's hour and a totally half, two hours away, done at 10 o'clock, and then not getting home till eight, and then starting all over the next morning. See, I love that because you are in control. Does that give you the feeling of control, Pam? Like you are totally in control because it does. Look, <laughs> I need you're a trying plan. To, you're trying to fit it. He's the doctor, they're the patient. Yes. He's doing exactly. house calls. That's it. It's a mentality. And it doesn't always work out that way. But if you have no plan at all, then probably nothing's going to work out. Yeah. See, so that's the other thing, and I know this is really getting minute, but the other thing is like, I have his lunch packed in a cooler. So he's got a couple of bottles of water, a couple of sandwiches, some fruit, some vegetables, all in a cooler. So he doesn't have to stop. Um, because it's again, you know, just wasting time. He doesn't want to be sitting in McDonald's eating crap. Well, yes, actually, he does want to be sitting in McDonald's eating crap, but I don't want him sitting in McDonald's. I want him eating something healthy, and I don't want him wasting a half hour in a, in in some place. You know, oh I want gosh. Him to you know stop, eat his lunch, and then get to his next appointment. 
and, and he usually eats while he's driving. And I know it sounds stupid, and, and but he's, I make everything so that he can like roll down the wrapper so he can eat a sandwich easily. But anyway, again, it's all prepared so that when he is on his day, he doesn't have to worry about anything. It's all prepared. And oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> so, and then there's no excuses that he stopped or missed an appointment or he didn't get, you know, or then he got hangry because he didn't have anything to eat. Yeah. You know, he got snacks, he's got water. He always takes a bottle in with um, him to a client. Sometimes they offer him something to drink, but if they don't, at least he has something with him. So just, again, just being prepared. So, so Joe Dukes, Joseph Dukes yeah. used to teach. He would bring in like an extra shirt because if he went into a smoker's home, then he'd come out yes. reeking like smoke. And then he had a, another change of shirt in the car so he could, you know, change into a shirt. Does, does James do that too? Yes, James keeps an extra outfit I have packed in the car for him in case, you know, of an outfit failure. He spills something, he gets a flat tire, you know, something happens, he's prepared. And so I also have, well, I'm, I'm really A type. So I have like a little metal kit for him. I have an emergency car kit. I have his bucket with his leads. I make sure that you know, um, all his apps. So if he can't get online, he has paper apps all ready to go in his bucket. And that's part of the whole process is being prepared. So having all of that done, then you can sit down and dial. Right? You know, Pam, yeah, it sounds like Pamela has her Eagle Scout, Eagle Scout badge for <laughs> appointment booking in the Alliance, man. This is good stuff. Keep going. I love it. So dialing is, is, is sort of the boring mundane. And you will hear James say a million times that it's the hardest part and the most important part because it's setting the stage. It's setting how your appointment's going to run. If you're, if you're nice with people, if you're um, giving them not too much information, but being not forceful, but firm and direct with them on the phone, that's gonna set your tone when you're in the apartment, in the appointment as well. So just making sure um, you're, you're, you have your mindset. So you want to do, and, and again, uh, Paul Epstein is, is, I'm a huge fan of his. He taught me everything. He taught James. He's taught a lot of people. He talks about low and slow. I'm a New Yorker. I tend to get really excited. I, get, I talk really fast. If I'm talking too fast, people aren't going to understand me. So I slow it way down because you don't know if you have a good connection, you don't know if they can hear well, and you don't want to sound like a telemarketer. So I take it really slow. So again, it's not even so much the script. There's a couple of things. So long as you say their name a lot, like as much as humanly possible, you want to put their name in wh whatever you're saying, because they're going to like hearing it. So long as you're speaking really slow, and I get this weird accent when I dial because I don't know how to talk slow as a New Yorker. And so it gets this like weird Southern drawl kind of thing, but that's okay. Cause people don't know me over the phone. But I talk really low and really slow. So that's the first important thing. And I say their name a lot. You know, when they answer the phone, it's Alex. Hi, Alex. This is Pamela. And then I just go on from there. So the words, again, not really important. It's more the tone. You want to stay low. You want to stay calm. You don't want to get too excited. And just keep going. I and love, you know, I, the way you just did that just makes me want to relax. Like you put me in like hypnosis right now because you're so calm and slow like it was amazing what you did just in that last few paragraphs of what you said you went real calm and that's i mean incredible. think about when you talk to your doctor's office those girls who call you yeah they're not excited they they have information to impart on you 
They need to get it done clearly. They don't talk fast. They're not excited. They're probably bored out of their minds. It's their job. This is your job. This is your job is to convey the information because they may remember, they might not remember. Their spouse might have filled it out. They might have filled it out. Their kids might have filled it out. You don't know. You don't know anything. So the most important thing is for you to be the professional, to stay calm, and just go through your script. And then there's things that you shouldn't say. You should really, really practice so that you don't say um. Don't say but. But's really bad. But, but negates everything you just said before. You know, you ever talk to your spouse or your, your parents or some one of your friends and then you're, you're going through this whole thing and then they say, that's great, but, well, you know that whatever comes after that but sucks. So you don't want to say but. You want to say things like, great, I appreciate you telling me that. It sounds like you know, when they ask you questions. Um, so again, it's really just about knowing why you're calling. You're calling them to get them the information on the 2021 benefits from whatever county you're in. And it's your job to get it to them. And are they going to be home? Now I say, I always ask, are you generally home before three or after four? And I specifically say those times for me, because it seems to prompt people. If I say, are you home before four? I mean, before three or after four, they're going to say, I'm home at 530. I'm home at six. Instead of saying, are you home before four or after five? If they say after five, now you're not sure if you can book it at five. And then you're going to be playing the, what time are they home game? But if you say four, they're going to say, I'm home at five. I leave work at five. You know, they'll give you a more specific time. And then you can figure out where to put them in your schedule. So it's key for me to make sure that it's before three or after four. That's great. So that's kind of like your kind of your demarcation line in in like James' schedule. That's kind yes. of where you cut it off between early part of the day versus late part of the day. Right. Oh, because that's so cool. Slots are prime, right? There's only so many time hours, you know, after five when most people are working. So you need to make sure that if they're more available during the day, you book it during the day or you put it on another day. If it's a retired person, they're really busy, but try to get them during the day because there's someone who's working that you want to fill that evening slot with. So you want That's to be very smart. That is very, very, very smart. And then write down on your leads, like we all know it, that I don't book everyone I, everyone I talk to. Not everyone's going to fit into the schedule. I write down when they tell me, oh, well, I'm home at three, but my spouse isn't home till seven. Well, if my schedule is full and I can't get James in after seven this week, I have it written down so that I know when I dial next week that they can have a spot after seven because that's when the spouse is home. So writing, I don't write down if they hung up. I don't write down if they yelled at me. I don't write any of that down. Like nothing bad gets written on the lead. Like I don't write, they hung up on me because I'm just calling them anyway. So why do I want to, you know, do a head game on myself? I just write down important, like they're away or they work nights, he works nights, she works days, they're only together on their day off, which is Tuesday and Saturday. So I write that down, because that's all going to help me book them maybe this week, but definitely next week. So that's what I write down on my leads, anything like that. You know what I like about that approach, the way you 
are talking about that is you will not compromise your game plan for James that you know you're you wouldn't accommodate someone at a time that is not convenient for James and his game plan you'll just book it you'll call him later at another time to book it but you're not going to screw up your game plan for putting him in the in a position to win right right i love that right. you know you have those days where it's like the wild west like i'm booking him all you know wherever he's got like he's driving hours like it, there's just days like that and that's okay too but i try to you know squeeze everything in so like next week we're going to disneyland so we need to get an extra day or two in this week to make up for next week and i'll just do a wild west day where i'll just call people and wherever i can get him i'll just i'll just book it and i'll just keep booking it so i mean you have those days too yesterday not yesterday tuesday tuesday i spent the day knocking in one area where i wanted him to work the next day and so i spent the day just knocking on doors and booking appointments for him and then if somebody was ready right then and there then i'll help them but otherwise i'll push it to james so how do you put off that? How do what you else do you want me to talk about, Alex? I mean, just, do people have questions? Did I cover yeah. things? Yeah, we have a question. Um, so when you really can't work them in this week, how do you set them up to call them next week? Well, well, I'll do, you know, I'll do the, you know, that. Sucking that, sound. Like, <laughs> ooh, I can't fit you in there. And then I'll, you know, if I can try to fit them in the end of the day, I'll go, I can't, I don't have any time available there. Then I could get you at the end of his day around 9, 30, 10, you know, will that work for you? And if they say no, then I say, okay, well, you know what? I tell you what, next time my office has me out there, I'll give you a call. I'm not sure when that's going to be, but I promise I'll call you the next time I'm in your area because I already told them that I'm scheduled in their area. Oh, that's cool. So tell me uh, your schedule, your, just your average schedule every week for dialing and running appointments. So we dial on Mondays for Tuesday and Wednesday. And then the rest of the team dials Thursday for Friday, Saturday. But because I'm not running appointments, I can dial Wednesday for Thursday. James is in the field Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. In the field three days a week. Oh, perfect. So because you dial for him, you have that flexibility of booking him efficiently while he's yes. running your booking. So you can book Wednesday for him so he can run Thursday. Yes. That's cool. And, how, and what's your appointment appointment objectives for those for all those days? Is it 40? Is it 30? What's your appointment's goal? Uh, well, I really, I try to do 10 appointments a day. Like. Okay. you know, eight solid and then an additional two or four iffies. Like you can kind of tell if someone's like not a hundred percent committed. Yeah, we used to call those B, book. We used to call those B appointments versus yeah. appointments. Yeah. So I try to get at least eight A's and then two to four B's. And are you are you willing to double book? With the bees? I'll, I'll double book, yeah. Okay, great. That's James great. James goes crazy. He goes completely crazy because he says, you know, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And I'm like, it'll all work out, honey. And he's like, no, yeah, I'm not going to make it. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, honey. And then inevitably, someone's not there or the spouse isn't there or, you know, it's super short. And then he's right back on track. Yeah. But don't and be afraid. It, you 
are in a much better position to say to someone, sorry, I've been helping so many families today. I'm running late. I can either come back at the end of my day because I'm missing my six o'clock with you. I can come by around nine or I could put you in tomorrow at six. It is, you are in a much better position for yourself to call someone that you know you're not going to make it to. I don't not show up. James doesn't ever not show up. But if he doesn't think he's going to make it, he's going to evaluate the last four appointments he has. And he's going to think about where he is, where they are, and who he's going to remove from his schedule. If he has to, that means he's having a great day. You know, if yeah. he's everyone like, yay, that's an, that's an awesome problem to have. So when you book the time, do you tell the client, okay, he'll be there between this and this time? Uh, do you give well, like, I, yeah. So I set a time that I want James there. So I'll say, all right, um, how does 12 work? And then they'll say, that sounds good. And I'll say, okay. Well, he'll be there sometime between 11 and 1. We're going to try for 12, but he's going to be there between 11 and 1. And then they're usually okay. Because I have a target that I need him to hit to keep his schedule moving. But then I give him a window on either side of it so that if he's running off, he's still going to make his window. Okay. And then, then if somebody gives me any pushback, I'm like, Really? Like you'll stay for the cable guy, you know, right. it, you know, it, is your mortgage more, less important than cable? You know, I mean, so, um, they'll, they'll sit all day for that. So when you like, look at the slots on your appointment calendar, are you booking them every hour on the hour? Yes. Unless I know he's jumping counties. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Jump counties for current or something like that, then I'll give him like an hour and a half. I'll space it an hour and a half or I'll give, I'll give him drive time. Okay, cool. Because we so, do have, now, you know how, Alex, how you were writing notes down? Yeah. On, on your, all your, well, your, your, your confidence level and your skill level grows the longer you're in the business. Yep. If you're good at taking notes and writing them down, then you can go back and look at them. So I'll go back and look at James's notes from three years ago, two years ago, six months ago, because we're getting new products all the time. And so I'll, I'll see, you know, someone's 86, well, we didn't have anything six months ago that we could help them with. So now he can go back and call them. So I go back and look at his notes also and fill in. And we just, this week we were struggling and um, I was having a tough time, which is why I was door knocking. But we called, we looked at a current client and he had made a note about um, thinking about something for retirement, but they weren't ready to do anything. Well, he called them and he went back and he met with them and he wrote some, somewhere like, I think 4,000 AP in the house, maybe more. I think it was combined like 500 a month. <laughs> and it actually turned out to be for retirement, but also with a disability writer. Yeah. Because that's, that's what rocking. was important to them. But that's rocking. Again, if you take good notes on your leads when you're in the home, you can go back to them, you can call them. We send letters to to every client after he meets with them. They, you know, just letting them know the process of what's happening. And then if he wasn't able to help them, just keeping the line of communication open. Like, I'm sorry, we weren't able to find something. Um, if, or if you change your mind or, you know, again, just reminding them that we're here for them. If they have questions, if they need help with something in the future please reach out. That's uh, very cool. That totally differentiates you from all the other not carrying life insurance agents out there that never sent them anything, even if they didn't close them on a, on a deal. Right. That's pretty right. cool. And we just, 
you know, we do want our clients to know we're, we're there for life. And so just, you know, those seven touches, just staying in touch with them, reaching out, making sure that they're okay. But then that adds to your day too. You know, Megan Woods is a perfect example. She does it better than anyone I know. Going back and helping families with other products, helping their friends and family. I mean, she really is amazing at that. And it's important as part of your business, as part of what we do is to make sure that we're protecting that family and everyone that they know. And they want, they want their family and friends. You just have to be bold enough to ask them. So tell me about your lead or ordering and kind of what is your objective every week on investing in leads and what type of leads do you invest in? So we, Sorry. that's all right, Jane. We were just talking about leads, what our lead budget is and how many we get. As many as we can. <laughs> so we spend money. I mean, we've spent $2,000 a week on leads if we have to. We, we try to get at least 10 A-leads mortgage protection. Those are the ones we love. And then we'll get a bunch of reworks for um, uh, final expense so that we have a lot more targets, right? So you want as many chances as possible. So we'll spend money on A-leads because those are pretty much a sure bet. When they answer the phone. Or the door. Or the door. Uh, so we, we're not scared to invest in that, but then we need more, right? You can't book 40 appointments on 10 leads. So we get, you know, either reworks or we're getting them from um, Integrity, you know, so those leads. Internet internet leads, and then we're going back to our current clients as well. But it's a process. I mean, we've, we've been where some of you are right now. And when we first started, we were paying for leads and we weren't having any success. And then, you know, we got to the crossroads where we were like, okay, this, you know, we're just spending three, $400 a week on leads and we're not, booking appointments and we're not selling any insurance. And then we stopped buying leads and we were like, okay, what are we going to do now? And so we're like, we're, we were door knocking. We were trying to call some clients that we helped to try to get referrals. And we went like two months without selling any insurance. And we're like, okay, this isn't working either. So we went back to buying leads and then it was a process of um, booking, doing more work to book more appointments and then slowly getting better in the home and then taking commission and buying more leads and then letting that snowball to where we are now. It wasn't, it didn't happen overnight and we don't expect it to happen overnight for anybody else either. It was a process that we that we we bought into the system and we believed that we could do it and we we called for coaching we called for help we told people this isn't working this sucks i don't want to do this and the people we were talking to said are you ready to do it the right way or do you want to keep sucking at it and failing and and we were like okay We'll do it the right way. And, and they were like, okay, this is what you need to do. You need to get 50 leads and then you need to make 400 calls and the people that don't answer the phone, you need to get in your car and you need to knock on their doors. And then we started doing that. And then the next thing we knew, we were consistently booking 20 appointments a week and we were writing five to $8,000 in premium. And then we were buying even more leads and booking more appointments and writing more premium. And then it was like, this is great. You know As, what? So there's, know? A, there's a lot of agents that would have quit because they say, oh man, these leads suck. The system doesn't work. This is like, we can't do this. Maybe God is telling us we shouldn't do this business anymore. What was it that kept you in, dude? Like what kept your belief alive that, 
you know, if all these other knuckleheads could do it, I could do it too. I mean, there's that point because there's agents that get to that point and then they, 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 they go in the corner, pee on themselves and quit. Like what makes you different than those other people? Well, okay. Well, first of all, it's the, <laughs> because there's two of us. It's, it, it's true. You know, the, the team. one and one equals 11. Right. Yep. So that's, that's that. I would so say that's, that's the the, power. probably the biggest part of it because we do what the other one doesn't feel comfortable doing. I don't, I'm not going to say it doesn't like or doesn't want to do what she doesn't feel, what Pam doesn't feel comfortable doing. I, I I'll do it for her. And what I don't feel comfortable doing, Pam does it for me. And together, you know, we we get the results we want because we work together. But she's but, she's relentless, and one of the honestly, reasons why. Hold on a second. Sorry. One of the reasons why I wanted to be on the call with her is because she's not going to tell you some of the things that she does to book appointments and to make sure that we're making money because you know she's not going to talk like that in front of people. But she. Like when people hang up on her, she'll call them right back. And she's like, I know you didn't hang up on me. We must have got disconnected. And so like she doesn't, she doesn't take no for an answer when it comes to booking appointments. And then if she talks to someone on the phone or she dials on them for a week, especially if it's an A-lead, she'll go knock on their door. And a lot of the appointments that I've gone to and some of my biggest sales and our best clients are people that she's gone to their house and showed them the lead and said, you know, something like, I know this is important to you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have filled this out. So I've been trying to call you and you're not answering the phone. So here I am. And James is coming tomorrow and Thursday. What time is better for you? And that's pretty much it. And then she, you know, she's relentless when it comes to getting her job done because she knows that it all starts with her. The appointment setting is the most important thing. And Paul, Paul Epstein hammered that into our heads. Like if there's one thing that you really, really, really need to learn in this business is how to book appointments and to do whatever you need to do to book appointments, whether it's door knocking or dial or making 800 phone calls or texting a picture of the lead to people, you know, whatever you need to do to get that appointment booked. That's where all of the success comes from, because it doesn't matter how good you are in the home if you don't have any appointments. I love it. So original question. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Had prompted when James first started in the business, he was kind of piddling around and just doing whatever. And I was getting a little frustrated because he really wasn't doing much. And then he took me to a hot spot when we had real hot spots. And uh, and I met, I think the first time was uh, Noel. Noel was there. And she said, oh, and you can earn a trip to the Mediterranean. And I went, <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> and she said, yeah. And I was like, when? 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 <laughs> she's like, you have till December. And this was like June. And so she sent me to work. And I was like, dude, <laughs> we are not going to that trip. And he was like, okay. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm not kidding. We're, we're, there's no, nothing is going to make us. They're giving us a free trip to Europe. We're going. Right. And so he worked. And then on the cruise that first morning, I think, um, they got all the newbies up on stage, all the people who had first earned the trip and I stood up there and I said <laughs> we are never ever <laughs> missing a trip ever from hell or high water we are going on every single trip that's offered she said no matter how hard James has to work <laughs> he's in the field no matter how hard James has to work we're never missing a trip again <laughs> and I love so it. James says, I'm going to work three days a week. So you figure it out. And so that's why our schedule is really important. She that's meant why go on appointments three days a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what in the field. In the field, three days. And we I make it you. work. She, you know, she books 25, 30 appointments in three days. That's yeah. rocking. 
that's what we need. So that's 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 our that's our goal usually. So um, people, I, we want I, I know that agents are going to hear what you just said this last like ten minutes, and so the excuse that they're going to come up with is, well, I don't have a spouse, or well, I don't have my spouse doesn't do anything in the business, and she she or he doesn't want to have anything to do with it. It's just me. So it's easy for you to do all that stuff. But how about me, little old me, just me by myself? Well, have, you, have you tried working with people. him? He doesn't <laughs> listen very well. He does his own thing. <clears throat> so sometimes <clears throat> it would be easier for, for, for us if it was just one of us well, because we there's no committee. Right. But in the beginning, it was just me. And what and happened was Pam saw the trip to the Mediterranean and she said, you need to go get us that trip. And so I went to work. You know, I did more of the effort. I did more dials. I did more door knocks. I booked more appointments. I helped more families. And six months later, Pam quit her job because I was making so much money selling insurance that she didn't need to work anymore. I mean, we were, we were literally, I was literally getting twelve to $15,000 a month <clears throat> income from helping families. And Pam was like, well, I want to do that too. And I was like, awesome. You can book the appointment. <laughs> <laughs> So we but just it's, complimented it's funny each how, other. you know, and Andy's really good at this, you know, <coughs> encouraging you to do it by giving away a trip, encouraging you to do it by giving away a sweatshirt. <laughs> that whole 2020 thing, I was like, I want that sweatshirt. And James was like, okay. I'm like, well, we're going to get that sweatshirt. And we did. He went out and you know, we, we, we did what we had to do and we got the sweatshirt and we got the sweatpants and we got the hat and we got the tumbler and we did it again and again and again, all because, you know, like how much business did we write for a sticking sweatshirt? Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Like I just bought a sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But it wouldn't say. It wouldn't say what we wanted it to 40, say. But, you know. I want you all to understand that Pam and I are more, more realistic than some of the people you will encounter in the Alliance. We know that it's not all rainbows and butterflies. It's not. And, and the difference, the thing that's going to separate you from the people who have to work a job for the rest of their life is when you get to that crossroads. We, we know that in the beginning, when you're struggling, it's hard because you don't want to do it because you're struggling. So it's like a catch 22 kind of thing. And the people who are still with the Alliance and making the six figure income are the people who decided that nothing was going to deter them from figuring it out and nothing was going to deter them from doing the work. And so you can either be that person, you know, or you can be the person who works a job for the rest of your life, if that's what you'd rather do. But understand that you have to go to work eight hours a day mostly five days a week and listen to a boss and have, you know, someone telling you what to do, or you can, you know, work for yourself and just put in the effort to figure out how to have the same results and success that other people are having just by doing what you're not willing to do. It just don't quit. Right. It's just like dialing. You just don't quit. Somebody hangs up on you. I always call them back. You know, and if it goes to voicemail, it goes to voicemail. I just call them back later, my next dial session. I mean, you just don't quit. You just keep going. And when I get frustrated or when I get tired or when I get scared because I didn't make all my, you know, book all the appointments that I wanted to, and I get frustrated and I think, God, oh, this sucks. I'm not doing it anymore. And then I think, okay, what am I going to do? And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to get back on the phone because <laughs> really. The alternative is so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like we just decided we're going to go to Disney. You know, it's it's fall break and we're going to take our daughter. This is her last year in high school and we're going to take her. Well, we and got duped into taking her. She came home from school and she was like, oh, my friends are going to Disney for fall break. And we were like, right. And all those people had planned it and right. saved for it. But we didn't have to. Right. Because all we have to do is work two extra days. And you we, know, we said, love it. We'll go. and that's, I mean, literally six appointments pays for 
Disney. A trip to Disney. <laughs> One day. I love that. Live, we live our life. But you know what's sad is our daughter will say, well, can I have blah, blah? And I'm like, no. And she'll say, it's just one more, <laughs> one more app. She breaks everything down per app. Oh, see, I love that, man. Uh-huh. So, so you guys, um, you, you, were you guys there uh, when Tim Goad and Megan Wood was there? I mean, at the meeting in Phoenix? Oh, my gosh. We were not. We, My niece was getting married in California. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we, we, missed, we it. missed it, which is devastating. I mean, we, we loved him. And any opportunity to get around any leader, y'all take it. I mean, if it was anyone, other, anyone else's wedding other than my niece, mm-hmm. we, we would not have gone. Oh, yeah. I definitely get that. So tell us about those the live events. Like, why do you have the live events for yourselves like why do you come to them why are they important for you well you know i just i went to uh dallas for the um medicare training which was awesome but it wasn't even for the medicare training it was just being around the team and being able to listen to uh, Paul Roberts speak, listen, listening to, um, Alex Fitzgerald was there too, wasn't he? Yeah. Was there and, uh, Diane Lampy and, and just, you know, so many people just poured into us and it's, it's those encouraging tidbits that you get from them. Things that hit your heart, things that you can, um, relate to things that, you know, it's nice to see and it's nice to hear that other people struggle too. I know it sounds stupid. I know the whole misery loves company, but when you see people always winning, 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 you you don't see the struggles. You don't see how difficult it is. You don't see what they're going through. But when you go to these events, you kind of hear it and they tell you some of the struggles that they've had, some of the things that they've had to overcome and how they've done it. And 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 what it takes, and and that changes everything. Does it gives you a whole new energy, a, a whole new lease on life? It's like restarting. You get to restart from that moment forward with all new thoughts about how we're going to get to this goal, and 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 setting bigger goals and reaching higher. You know, we would not be as far as we like if we didn't go to any of them we would be, it would be, a, this would be like a part-time thing and, and we'd be, you know, grinding it with, you know, jobs. And and in the wow. beginning, we didn't because it cost money. And we, like I said, when I was saying we were in the same shoes that a lot of you are in now. In, in the beginning, when you first start and you're struggling financially, and then someone says, oh, you need to come to this conference. It's going to cost you a thousand dollars. And you're like, dude, Really? Are you kidding? Like, I, I can't pay my water bill and you want me to spend a thousand dollars to go to this thing. You must be out of your mind. And then we did it. I didn't go because we didn't have the money. And and then, you know, I think it was Joe who said, you know, trust me, you know, I'll cover this if you cover this. And we went. The first thing was it was called Instant Thunder at the time. And this was we were eight months into the business, still struggling. <laughs> And we went to Instant Thunder. And the next month, we wrote like $3,000 in premium from, just from Instant Thunder. Wow. So it turned us into believers, into why Andy has those eight steps. Mm-hmm. And one of the steps is attend all meetings. And it's there for a reason, you know, not, <laughs> not for you to complain about. And, 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 and they're strategically placed, right. right? Every couple of months. And if you look at our business, Everyone's it, it business. It goes up and then it goes <laughs> down. Oh, and right. another event, it goes up. Uh, and then we say, ah. another event, it goes up. And so. It's really, we, that's the reason for it is because you lose motivation, you lose momentum, you lose focus. And what, right when that starts happening and your premium goes from, you know, 7,000 a week to 2,000 a week or 1,000 a week, there's another event. And then when you come home from that event, you get right back on track. And that's why it's one of the eight steps to success. Because if you don't 
plug into the system, you're, gonna, you're, you're pretty much setting yourself up to, to fail even more than you already are. So you have to just dive in and believe in it. That's cool. So what, um, uh, so does anyone have any questions? Like chat at me questions, because I know if I unmute, it's gonna be a crazy. Anybody have any questions as we're getting ready to, like we've got seven more minutes. So who's got questions for James and Pam? Crickets. Well, I would just say, don't quit. Don't, don't give up. Don't get frustrated for long. The people you're calling, they don't know who you are, know why you're calling. You caught them at the wrong time. You know, it's just how many times I've been yelled at, hung up on, and then book it the next week. And then they're great clients. I mean, you just catch people at the wrong time. You know, there's no other business like this. And if you can just stay calm, know your script, all rebuttals are perfect, great. That's exactly why I'm calling. Aim. Acknowledge, then, ignore, and move forward. Yeah. Right? And then just move on. Oh, it sounds like you got this already. Perfect. Great. That's exactly why I'm calling. Are you available before three or after four? Oh, you're not interested. It sounds like you're not interested. Oh, great. That's exactly why I'm calling. Are you available before three or after four? I mean, honestly, whatever they have to say, that's exactly why I'm calling. I love it. Appreciate you letting me know that. Oh, great. How are they going to argue with that? How do, how do you, you know, they can't argue. And then that just is going to diffuse their first layer of defense. So tell us the magic down. behind dialing three times in a row. It's just making sure that they know that this is important. And now you've gotten their attention. You're not a telemarketer. You're not their friend just to gab. You know, you have something important to discuss with them. Yeah, telemarketers don't call three times in a row. Unless they're more likely to answer the phone on the third ring. And when you finally get to someone, and this will happen to everyone, where you finally get in touch with someone and maybe it's a month or two months down the road and you find out that the spouse passed away, you feel horrible. You feel horrible that you didn't get there sooner because you could have helped them. Or you called them and you just didn't push them enough or ask them enough questions on the phone and you just couldn't book it. And then the next time you call, you know, they're in the hospital with COVID and now they're not going to be eligible for the same plan that, that they were before. I mean, the first time that happens to you, you're not going to quit. And you're going to realize that these are families that need your help and want your help. And they're just nervous and they're scared. And that's their knee jerk reaction. And just relax and move on. Try to Stay make it calm. a game for yourself. Make it like a game where... You can't wait to get an objection to overcome that objection. And then also you have to be a little cocky when you're on the phone and be like, you filled out this form. Nice. I know it's important to you. <laughs> we didn't just randomly pick your name out of a hat. I love the take me off your list. Oh, it sounds like you think you're on a list. <laughs> I'm offering you a call because you sent in this request. And then... I'll repeat all the information that's on it. Or maybe it was your, if the spouse's name, maybe it was your spouse. You just don't get discouraged. You are there to help these families. And my favorite it is, is super important. My favorite is, can you just mail it to me? And then Pam's like, we did mail it to you and you filled it out and you mailed it back to us. <laughs> Our job is to get this information to you. <laughs> yeah, That's good. That's good. I love just, it. Just staying calm and just honestly, just remember they're regular people like you and they need help. And nobody wants to think about death, especially their death. Nobody wants to think about their spouse dying. But it's our job to make sure that they realize that they are going to die, that their spouse is going to die. And it's a matter of are they going to be prepared or are they not going to be prepared? Are they going to be go, doing a GoFundMe or a car wash? Or will they be able to grieve knowing that they don't have to worry about money? 
And that's really what it comes down to is making sure that they're taken care of in the end. Yeah, and you may feel like salespeople and you're trying to trick people into meeting with you so you can sell them insurance and until somebody dies. You know, once you help a family and someone passes away and you get a death claim, you're not going to feel like a salesperson anymore. You're going to realize that what you're doing is important. And that's why we push so hard to make the appointment and we push so hard to sit down with the families because when someone dies, you get to see the difference between helping someone before they die. And then when the people that die that don't get insurance and they're having car washes and GoFundMes and Jeez. you you realize how important it is what you're doing. Absolutely. Well, you guys were you guys were awesome. Thanks so much for sharing with your team. I'm sure my people got a whole bunch out of this. And uh, I hope so. Yeah. And um, Stop it. <laughs> have fun in Disney next week. Thank, Thank you. you. And Man, I'm so if anybody needs anything, Alex, I, I'll be more than happy to, to talk to someone. President's Club has a great program, too. You can reach out and ask for help. Um, Mike and Noel has those dialings Monday and Thursday mornings. You can get on and listen to people dialing live, overcoming objections, how to set appointments. Um, so there's tons of opportunities for you to listen to people dialing live and it's so helpful. And I listen to it every morning before my dial session. So. Absolutely. That's awesome. Okay. Thanks for having us, Alex. Hey, you guys are great. Go Dallas Cowboys, right? James? That's right. <laughs> See you right, in Aruba. Go Cowboys. Okay. Bye. See you everybody. Thanks so much. God bless.